Welcome to the Prep Zone. My name is Grant Yenny, and tonight we're here at Rebel Stadium as Salmon travels to take on the Pearl River Rebels in a big district rivalry. Now this rivalry matchup so big, our analyst here, Tiger Edwards, has been a part of it for a long time as a coach and as a broadcaster. How big is this rivalry to, to these players and coaches? It's a big rivalry, but as of late, the Spartans have dominated. But don't underestimate the Rebels because they're four and two do I need to say that again? Four and two going into this game. A win would lock up a playoff berth in this rivalry. In Pearl River, they like to keep it on the ground, that ground and pound offense. Their go-to guy is Courtney Moore. What do we know about him? Courtney Moore, all you need to know is he's a hard runner. He's like Brent Bourgeois, except he's Courtney Moore. He's got 893 yards rushing, 7.8 a carry, 10 touchdowns. He's the man toting the football. And Salmon's looking to bounce back after a loss last week to Franklin. And what do they need to do tonight? Oh, tonight they've got to slow down the aforementioned Courtney Moore. They've got to finish strong. Last week they lost 32-26 in overtime when they didn't finish strong. So finishing strong, slowing down more, the keys for the Spartans. Thanks, Tiger. Salmon at Pearl River. Let's talk to the coaches. Pre-game with Coach Lab. Coach, last week you're, you're coming off of a, a big win. How do you plan on uh, carrying that over into this week? Well, you know, last week's gone. Last week's done and over with, and we talk about winning every week. And you know, this week, we got to win this week. And, you know, last year, we got outscored in district you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 250 to 14. And that's been our motto since, you know, this is my second year here. And our motto, Ben, is, you know, to learn to finish. And, uh, you know, we, we got to learn to finish district games. We got to compete in district games. And, uh, you know, I think we will. I'm, you know, I'm very confident in our team. And they, they improving and uh, they're getting after. And that's what we could, we could continue to do around here. With district play starting tonight, uh, especially against, uh, a rival. Uh, is there a different mindset that goes into this, or do you keep it the same you've been doing uh, the whole season? Uh, it's the same we do every year. I mean, you know, I, I told our kids, I mean, technically, you know, they say rival. I mean, you know, Simon's been having the best of Pearl River for 10 or 12 years now. It's, I don't know when's the last time they won. I know, like, way back in, you know, I think 2002 or something, 2006, we got a, a victory and a jamboree against those guys. But, you know, they've had the upper leg, and, uh, you know, Coach Landon, those guys do an excellent job. They got great athletes over there. They got great tradition. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to build here. That's what we're trying to do here. And uh, we'll continue to work at it. We're going to grind. We're going to get better every week. And, you know, tonight, tonight, to come out here and prove some things that we've improved. And, you know, that's all I want from my kids is to play the best they can possibly play tonight. And what's it going to take uh, to beat a team like Salmon tonight? Well, obviously, you know, they got athletes in space all over the place. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of the total opposite. We're going to kind of line it up and kind of grind it out. And, you know, we're going to play our style of football that Pearl River football is. That's what we're going to do. We're going to grind it. We're going to line up. We're going to challenge you. And we're going to run right at you. And, you know, we'll take what happens. And, you know, we, we're confident in what we're doing around here. You know, obviously, we want to continue to get people to believe in this program and want to be part of Pearl River High School. And that's been improving. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to do that. And, you know, I think the things uh, are heading in the right direction. Bring with Coach Leonard. Coach, uh, coming in a, a, to a big uh, district rivalry matchup, uh, is there anything extra that goes into the planning of this one? Or, and how do you keep your uh, players' emotions in check coming into a game like this? We try not to be emotional. Um, we want to be passionate about what we do, not necessarily emotional. Those go up and down too much. So um, preparation for this game is the same as it's always been. It's just us trying to get uh, the things that we are making mistakes on and correct those as quickly as possible and uh, become a better football team. And uh, how do you, how do you, uh, you're playing a team that's a ground and pound team, keep it on the ground a lot. Uh, what's it going to take to get a victory uh, tonight against this Pearl River team? Well, I think we've got to get off the field on third down defensively. That's going to be a key for us. Get off the field on third down, give our offense some opportunities, uh, not let those guys be on the sideline watching a football game because they're controlling the clock. And if we do that, I think we're going to be okay. And Smith putting the ball in play for the Salmon Spartans as they kick off to Pearl River, Goth will receive it, trying to take it up the middle, following a blocker and dragging defenders, and he will be brought down by a host of Salmon Spartans at about the 33-yard line. Kind of a sky kick there to start this one up by Eddie Smith, and uh, Doth brought it back up the middle in the first down for the Rebels. We'll get our first look at Ricky Jessup. And this Salmon, excuse me, this Pearl River offense, Salmon defense on the field, led by Short. And of course, Courtney Moore in the backfield, the second leading rusher in the metro area. And 
busted play. Jessup will be dropped in the backfield by Garrett Crawford as he busted right through the line and, wrote and bust, uh, busted up the play before the handoff could even be given. That was a run blitz right there. Coach Leonard dialed up on, on first down. Um, I'm going to tell you, Coach Leonard and his, his assistants do a great job of scouting, and they will, they will have things that they're going to like to do in different formations versus Pearl River. Here's Justin Dean in at quarterback for Pearl River. Takes the snap in the shotgun, and the, the throw is low and incomplete intended to Doth on the right side. It's real important for the Rebels to get off to a good start here in this ball game. Their, uh, Coach Labradette has come in here trying to instill a new attitude. They got some new uniforms. Those things, those those are pretty rad. I, I like them. I the like new those grays. Yeah, the new grays. And uh, the, but you got to have a little something with it. And Coach Labradette is is trying to take this program a little bit at a time. And being four and two right now, he's done a good job. Well, look at this. They have trips to the top of your screen. Pearl River, known as a ground and pound team, dropping back, looking left side, pressure coming, and Dean will be sacked. Well, he won't be dropped, but progress will be stopped by Tory Douglas for the Salmon Spartans. But yeah, you said new new look and new formations there with trips spreading the spreading it out. Right, and Crawford, Garrett Crawford, right there with a, a lot of pressure on the quarterback and uh, really made that play. Obviously, coverage in the in the secondary and is going to bring up fourth down for the Rebels. And fourth and long, Jay Alexander is back to punt for the Rebels <clears throat> as they get in formation back deep. Deshaun Short. Deshaun Short and Rodriguez back to receive the punt, and they fake it. Pass coming, and he'll take it himself running. That is Ethan Martinson, but he is well short of the first down. But gambling on fourth down early in the game. Again, you bring, you're, you're a head coach a couple years into building a program, you ha and you didn't have success, so you didn't have success in your first three plays. Why not take this advantage right here and try to fake it and see if you could catch them off guard? Didn't happen, but gutsy, gutsy call by Coach Labradet. So now we'll see LJ Leonard and the Salmon offense. First and 10. Leonard, motion calling for it, tosses it up to Joshua Rodriguez, still on his feet, but there's a flag down. He's still going before being dropped over there by number 25, Matthew Elsenson. They went a little wide with the speed, speed toss, basically. Uh, however, there's a flag on the play, so that one's going to come back right in the area of holding. And, and right you are, it is holding. So first play, the long gain by Rodriguez negated by a holding penalty. One thing I think we're going to see is that the Spartans are going to try to take advantage of any speed that they have and get outside and around um, the Pearl River defense if they can. So they'll place the ball at the 47 yard line. Ball at the 47 yard line, still first down. Wide receivers are, are the receivers are tight over there on the right side. They have the lone receiver, Eddie Smith, is at the bottom of your screen. Rolling out is Leonard, pitch to Williams, still on his feet, hurdling a defender, still going and pushed out of bounds over there by Jessup. That time they got in a, um, a bunch formation. That's three rece receivers close to the line and ran lead option with uh, the quarterback, L.J. Leonard. Pretty pitch back there to um, uh, Lee Vance Williams, and he, he, he got it for a big game. Going to bring up second and seven. Second and seven, Leonard using the hard count. 
And we're seeing uh, Ricky Jessup over there at corner for Pearl River. He was their quarterback the first time we covered him against Pine Prairie. Pressure coming, screen out to Deshaun Short. Short running upfield, breaking a tackle and forced out of bounds over there by Jay Alexander. Good quick screen out here to the left. Good blocking by the wide receivers and a good cut by Short. Got between the two blocking uh, wide receivers and cut it up the field and it's a first down for the Spartans. And Short playing both ways for the Spartans. He's also uh, that kind of dog outside linebacker for him on defense. So first and 10. Motion, Leonard, and they do that pitch again to Ro uh, Rodriguez, and he's dropped over there on the right side by Zach Ussery. Ussery came from behind, got in behind there, and made a good tackle there, but we have a flag on the field. Another flag on the same play. Yeah. Awaiting the call from the Whitehead on the field. Personal foul against Pearl, it's personal River. foul on Pearl River. Wow, that's the kind of mistake you don't want to make. Nope. Especially when they're having, when they're moving the ball, you give them extra yardage. So now it'll be first and goal. Well, first and, no, first and about two. Second and two. They keep flipping them. Yeah, they yeah. keep moving it around on me. High snap. Leonard, screen, out, caught. And is it a touchdown or is he short? He sh they mark him at about the one-yard line. Pass complete out there to number 89, Braden Gable. Gable made a good catch, kind of caught it near the turf turned it up and broke a tackle and got down to the one yard line. So, I'm assuming well, it's, it's like a wildcat with Deshaun Short in at quarterback. Short takes the snap, running right side hole wide open and he can jog right into the end zone. Touchdown, Deshaun Short and the Salmon Spartans. Yeah, they went with that wildcat look like you said. They had two guys Right there in front of him, and it looked like he was running it, going to run it straight up, but he saw the opening and cut it outside. Use that speed. He's in the end zone, and the Spartans have an early lead. Eddie Smith on to attempt the extra point. This time, the duty for the Spartans. Waiting the snap. Snap back, hold down, Smith kick is up, and it is good. So with 8.29 remaining in the first quarter, Salmon Spartans lead 7-0. Smith lining up to kick, and he will boot it downfield. It will be returned by Alexander. Alexander. Trying to find a hole, and he'll be run down over there by Tavion Cooley. Alexander misplayed the, the initial kick. I didn't think he thought it was going to get that deep. Eddie Smith took about four steps and popped that thing up deep. Alexander had trouble getting it, and when he did, uh, by that time, everything had closed in, and the uh, Rebels have a first down deep in their, ter their own territory. Not a good place to start. No, and let's see if they go back to that spread or if they stick to their traditional... Uh, running game. They have more back there along with looks like Stoddard. Dean calls for it. Handoff. And Salmon saying they have it. And they do. It was fumbled. Wow. So big turnover early. Salmon falls on it. I'm going to tell you that they're lining up in a wing tee, which they've done for years. Right. One of the things that happened in the early 90s when Bill Stubb was the head coach and Jerry Leonard was on the defensive staff along with defensive coordinator at that time, Billy Beasley, who's on his staff now, is they broke down the wing tee and how they could attack it. And that's one of the things that Salmon has done over the years against the wing tee, being able to 
match up and find the right combination to shut it down. First and 10, Leonard calls for it. Hand, he'll keep it himself coming left side and he'll be brought down by the shoestrings over there by Matthew Elsenson. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a tackle right there, open field tackle by Elson. Going low on Leonard. Elsenson. Elsenson. Elsenson also plays both ways. He uh, doubles as a running back for the Pearl River offense. Good open field tackle right there. And um, Second down for the court. I know Eric Shooter's the offensive coordinator, and he's not afraid to use L.J. Leonard to tote the football. Second down. Leonard calls for it. Looking right side. Throws and overthrown. Incomplete. Intended. Intended for Antonio Marquez. Yeah, roll right there to avoid the pressure because it looked like um, Pearl River was going to uh, blitz. And uh, LJ floated that one out the back of the end zone. So that will bring up third down for Salmon. The ball's at about the 10-yard line. Leonard and Lee Vance Williams. Motion, and that pitch up once again to Rodriguez, and an, and there's another flag and once on that again, same. They yeah. run it three times. There was a flag on all three of them. Right. This one is going to be against Salmon, though. The last one was against Pearl River. See the call from the White Hat. An illegal shift will be and called on Salmon. What you're having is uh, is a timing issue on that whole thing, and um, we have a timeout. So timeout on the field with 7:13 remaining in the first quarter. Salmon leads 7-0. Right, third and long for L.J. Leonard and the Salmon offense. Leonard calls for it, dropping back, looking down the middle, batted away. Incomplete. Intended. Intended for Rodriguez. Kind of threw that one up there, hoping Rodriguez would go get it, but uh, incomplete. Good defense there from Jessup yes. to get up there and knock the ball away. So that will bring up fourth down for Salmon. LJ and Levant still on the field awaiting the call. It looks like Salmon is going to keep their offense on the field on fourth down. And they will. As LJ communicates the play to his offensive line. They have trips to the right. Leonard calling for it, dropping back, looking down the middle, pass complete. Touchdown, Deshaun Short, his second of the night. That time, Leonard really planted and zipped that ball in there to Short for the touchdown. Good pitch and catch there by the Spartans. 13 to 0, extra point coming from Smith. As Braden Gable on the hold. I was just thinking to myself that, you know, they just got the ball on a turnover and they needed to do something to score. Maybe they were going to squander this with three bad plays. And they turn, out, turn around and get a touchdown. Snap back, placement, Smith's kick is up. And yeah. it is good. So with seven minutes to go in the first quarter, Salmon leads 14-0. Smith kicking off following the short touchdown. Low line drive bouncing. It'll be picked up and returned straight ahead. Still on his feet, number 42. That's Robert Bosch. He gets down to the 41-yard line on that low line drive kick from Smith. Pearl River good field getting position. some good field position to start this drive. Yeah. 
And let's see if they can get a drive going here. As Salmon has quickly gone up 14 nothing on them. It's only 6.53 uh, left in the first quarter. They need a, they need a little success here. <clears throat> and the ball spotted at the 42 yard line. It's first and 10. And Dean using that hard count, trying to lure Salmon off sides, no one biting. Stoddard and Moore in the backfield. Dean calling for it. He'll hand off Moore up the middle. Still on his feet, and he's dragged down over there by Chris Jones and a host of other Salmon Spartans. Nice run there. After about a five-yard gain. Right. Moore just straight ahead. A little more than five, I think. Or I could be wrong. Yeah, you were about five. Uh, yeah. Five and a half? Nah. We can I don't know. compromise on it this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it, doesn't it looks, matter. It looks about like it was, second and four now. It so. was positive yeah. yards. It was uh, on first down, which is great. The second and four, Dean calling for it. And he'll keep it himself going right side. Moore kind of lead blocking for him. And he will be brought down over there by Deshaun Short along with Chris Jones. But it will pick up the first down for the Rebels. Yeah, it was a broken play that they turned into a first down. That's, that's something positive. When that happens, good things happen. So Pearl River looking to extend this drive after uh, – the first play went, the first drive three and out, second drive had a fumble. And Dean awaiting the play from the sideline. Calling for it, he'll hand it off to Moore, heading up the middle. And he is gang tackled after another about five or six yard gain. That was my reference in the pregame to Brent Bourgeois who played here Gained 1,400 yards, I think, in his senior season. Hard-nosed runner like that could, could find the open spot and run hard. Second and four for the Rebels. Dean keeps it himself up the middle in the quarterback sneak. And he'll be dropped over there by number 11, Grid Isidore. 35-yard line. So that'll bring up, well, it'll be third and maybe, third and maybe one. Well, back to back first down. First down. So another first down for the Rebels. 5-14 remaining on the clock. Very slowly getting back to the line uh, as the center needed to adjust his helmet. All enforced. They lined up under, tried that hard count again. Stoddard will shift sides. Dean calls for it. Hand off Moore again, coming right side. Man, he hits that hole hard. And he's brought down by Devon Albert. That's how, that's exactly how Coach Laverdette wants this game to go. Run the football, run the clock, keep the ball away from oh, Salmon. Uh, although he had, they didn't accomplish that in the first two series, they're doing it here. And conversely, talking to Coach Leonard before the game, he said we need to get off the field. We need to stop them, get our guys off the field, keep them from driving like this. And a pass, Dean lofts it up over the middle, intended, intended for Bradley James, but falls incomplete. Looked like he might have been open that time. Good play action, fake and throw. Justin Dean a little long on that one. And Grid Isidore along with Devon Albert on the coverage. So that'll bring up third and five for the Rebel offense. Big down right here. Big down. Dean tried using a hard count once again to lure Salmon offsides. Very disciplined, staying onside. Tried it again. We're going to have to have and a timeout. This time, a timeout 
called by Pearl River. So with 4.07 remaining in the first, Salmon leads 14-0. Third and five, Dean calling for it. He'll hand it off to Moore, and he'll be dragged Moore. down he in didn't the go, backfield. He didn't go down initially. He was trying to break out of that tackle and spin. Didn't do it. They're going to go for it is my, my, my guess. The nose Marcel Perry on the tackle. So you have fourth and about four. And a flag is down. The referee is talking it over. You see the White Hats call. The referees are on first. And uh, <laughs> Salmon is pointing over to Pearl River, letting the, trying to let the coaches know that it's probably on the Rebels. But personal foul, and it's on Salmon. So all that pointing was, well, inaccurate as the call was actually on the Spartans. Wow, what a, what a gaff right there. So that, that gives Pearl River a first down. And as you said, a, quite a gaff. The first and 10 for Pearl River. Dean calls for it. He'll roll out to the left, keeping it himself, running, has real estate, he will score! Justin Dean puts points on the board for the Rebels. Great play action, fake, he had the full back in the flat, took it himself, ran it in, good play by the Rebels. Something they needed right here in this game. Extra point coming. Once again, Kick coming from Hunter Martinson. And there's a little confusion on the field with the center. Snap is back, it's high, but it's down and kick is up and it is good so with 332 remaining in the first quarter Salmon leads 14-7 Alexander back to kick it off for the Rebels and it's an onside kick but I don't know if it went the 10 yards and it's picked up by Grid Isidore who will be tackled out of bounds over here on the near sideline by Jay Alexander I would say that was not really a smart play by Grid, I'm going to call him Gridiron. Gridiron, Gridiron. Is, is the door. Um, I mean, he got some yardage, but he was taking a chance there by putting his hand on the football. Would have been blown dead there. Either which way. Right now, they have a foot. They have, and I, I was suspecting that they may do. They're pulling out all stops. Coach Labradette is not, is not going to rest on this. You're down 14-7. He's had a fake punt and an onside kick. Well, and he said in pregame, he said that, you know, Salmon's owned this rivalry for many, 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 many years, and he wants to take it back, and he'll do whatever it takes to take that rivalry back. Leonard rolling out. He'll keep it himself uh, on the right side, and he'll be tackled over there. By A.J. Munts. Nice play right there defensively on that option play. We see second down and 10, no gain on the play. Lee Vance Williams in the backfield. Leonard calling for it, high snap. He'll hand off to Lee Vance, going up the middle. He gets a gain of three or four before being brought down over there by Mike Mitchell, the 5'10", 210 pound junior. Good straight ahead run in there by Lee Vance. And positive yardage for the Spartans. Williams, 5'6", 155, he has that good low center of gravity. He's able to shift around tackles, fighting for the extra yardage. 
That brings up third and six for the Salmon offense. They have two to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Leonard trying with the hard count. Pearl River stays on side, snap is back. Quick throw out and caught over there by Kyron Donaldson. Man, one defender over there almost made a head of pick on that one. It was a long throw from Leonard, but it picked up a first down for the Spartans. So that'll bring up first and 10, a minute 49 to go in the first quarter. And they're taking their time getting the play in and setting it up. No rush, first quarter action. Um, you're up 14-7, make sure you get it right. Make sure you get that seven points back you just gave up. Leonard, snap is high, but it gets back and Lee Vance Williams running backwards, getting in a big block thrown by Deshaun Short. Williams still on his feet over on the right side and he's brought out of bounds for no gain. That was the longest run for no gain I've seen all season. There were some good blocks, flashes of brilliance. But, but, but no all gain. Led to no gain. <laughs> but no gain. Yeah. <laughs> and good defense by the uh, Rebels. Yeah, good defense. So second and ten for the Salmon offense. Deshaun Short coming off the field. Under a minute, clock running. About 45 seconds left on the clock here in the first quarter. And Salmon still taking their time. At slow tempo, setting up everything. Leonard has to play in. They're down to 10 seconds to go. The hand of the referee's up with no. Leonard will call for it. Snap floats back there. Leonard throwing left side and overthrows the intended receiver, Antonio Marquez. A little high on that throw. He was open. That'll bring up third and 10. It also stopped the clock with 17 seconds left. And Leonard awaiting the call from the sideline. What do you think they do here on third down? Oh, I, I don't know. If we may see something a little different than we've seen. How about a um, screen pass? Because the the head. Well, they're going to take a timeout. And talk it so over. Salman calls the timeout. Uh, 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Salmon up 14-7. 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Leonard in, is in the backfield alone. He'll take the snap, looking downfield, tosses it, and incomplete. Intended over the middle, intended for Deshaun Short. Coverage over there from Jay Alexander. They had a couple of uh, receivers in that area, and uh, to me, I don't think that was some busted routes in that situation, I think. So it looks like Salmon will go for it once again on fourth down. Last time they went for it on fourth down, they ended up with a touchdown to Deshaun Short. We'll see now. I haven't seen a crossing route yet. They all seem to be deep and uh, are out routes. Leonard communicating the play into his offensive line. As this Pearl River crowd is getting loud, wanting their defense to get a stop. Snap is back. Leonard looking downfield. Fresh. Oh, and they call a false start uh, before the play even started. Wow. So the Pearl River fans like that call. And that'll bring up fourth, fourth and 15. So now what do you think they go with? And Leonard communicating the play in. Crowd getting loud once again. 
Who knows, it's fourth down. Trips right. Snap back, Leonard looking right side, lofts it up to the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown by Deshaun Short once again. Short went up the sideline and he just lofted it up there for him. The two inside receivers kind of ran a post and took everybody else away from it. And Short jumped up there and made a heck of a catch. So three touchdowns on the night so far for Deshaun Short and the first quarter just ended. So we'll see Smith on to attempt the extra point. I mean, it has, if you're Coach Labradette, you have to feel bad because you, you got him pinned down back, and all you got to do is stop him, you know, and you get the ball back, and you're down by one, one score. Now you're down by two. And the extra point is good. So at the end of the first quarter, Salmon leads 21 to 7. St. Tammany Parish Public Schools, an A-rated school district. Graduates with the highest ACT scores in the state. Facilities with the latest technology. Safe and secure schools. A variety of sports. Fine arts. And learning to last a lifetime. I'm Superintendent Trey Foles. And this is where we educate every child, every day. Smith kicking it away for the Spartans. Following the short touchdown, it's kicked back. Jay Alexander drops it, but he'll get it back, running, taking it over here near side, and he's dropped and by Devon fumble. Albert. And they say a fumble. Let's see what the White Hat says. Salmon's confident. They have it, and uh, I they, guess they do. do. <laughs> they came out of the pile with it. What was he going to say uh, at that point? So Salmon takes over at the 10-yard line. Alexander has misplayed two kickoffs. The first one, he got back, got it and got back up and ran back. That time on the run back, he fumbled it over to Salmon. Let's see if the Spartans can take advantage. It's already 21-7. Salmon getting very good field position to start this drive. First and goal from the nine. The nine. The Leonard call in the play. And snap is back and we have whistles. So awaiting the call from the officials. An illegal substitution on Pearl River. So that'll It'll still be Salmon. first down. Yeah, and just move Salmon up a little. So, yeah, they have the ball at about the four and a half. Leonard calling for it. Handoff Williams, and he will score. Had a hole you could drive a truck through. Just simple handoff and run. I mean, like you said, a truck could have run through that one. And the and Spartans, because of the miscue by Pearl River, have gotten themselves back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. And Smith on to kick the extra point, and there it's 27-7, looking at 28-7. Snap back, kick is up, and it is good. So with 11.42 remaining in the first half, Salmon leads 28 to seven. Smith kicking off for the Spartans following the Lee Vance Williams touchdown. It's back, Jay Alexander will return it going up the middle, has room still on his feet, and he'll be brought down 
at the 40-yard line. Excuse me, that is not Alexander, that's Zeke Marchese. Marchese with a nice run back that time to get it back out to the 40-yard line. And, and there's a flag on the field. We're going to tack on a little bit more for some extracurricular, I believe. Awaiting the call from the white hat, but yeah, I think you're right with the extracurricular. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Salmon. So you know Salmon is 0 for 2 when pointing at Pearl River saying they did it. Uh, I, so the tail of the tape on that is don't do it. So that'll be only first. point when you get the football on a on a turnover. How's that? And that'll bring up first and excellent field position for the Pearl River offense here as it'll be first and 10 from the 44-yard line. They try that hard count. Everyone stays on their side. Justin Dean awaiting the call from Coach Lab on the sideline. Dean calls for it. He'll hand off more right side. Breaks one tackle, still churning, and brought down over there by number 52, Jeremy Hudson. Right there, they, they lined up with a wing and a slot, and slot back came inside the block for Moore, and Moore got pretty good yardage on that kind of a power play. So second and five for the Rebels. They have Al Doth lined up to the bottom of your screen, everybody else in tight. Motion and handoff, but it's on the ground, picked up by Dean, and he is leveled. Great. By Tavion Cooley. Great job by Dean of looking back and realizing that the ball was, the football was on the turf and he fell on it. It's still second and five. Excuse me, third and five. Dean. Tried that hard count again. They have more in the backfield. Stoddard over here on the wing. And they'll hand it off to Moore. Left side hits the hole hard, going through. And it's, I mean, it's really, it's second and third effort that it takes to, to bring down Moore. Absolutely. Just ran straight ahead and busted out of the tackle of Jeremy Hudson. Hudson had his hands around him at his ankles, and he just stepped out of that. Eventually brought down by Tavion Cooley. Play being signaled in, clock running, uh, under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Stoddard switching sides, Stoddard in the backfield along with Courtney Moore. Dean calls for it, handoff Moore, left side once again. Moore. He's wrapped up after crossing the 30-yard line, wrapped up and brought down by Torrey Douglas, the, other, the right side dog linebacker. So right there, they uh, blocked out. The um, Moore's the fullback. The, the uh, halfback came inside and blocked on like a uh, isolation play. And that'll bring up second and seven, a long seven. So they're putting the players in different positions in different formations, but running essentially the same play. Doth is out wide, handoff. To Stoddard fighting his way, but he will be brought down in the backfield. That time they went a little different. They faked it to Moore to see if they could draw uh, Salmon to Moore and try to bounce it outside the other way. Tackled by Torrey Douglas and Jeremy Hudson. Bring that, it up. That is also known as the buck sweep right there. The more you know. Third and seven for the Pearl River offense. Justin Dean will put Alexander in motion. Hand off Moore going right side. Had room, but he kind of cut it back. He hesitated a little bit and brought down by Douglas. 
There should have been a penalty on that play. Uh, number 33. Stoddard. Uh, Stoddard was lined up on the left side, and he was moving when the ball was snapped. Uh, At the same time as Alexander was coming. Right. Referee did not see it, therefore it was not a penalty. But it's fourth and a, a four for Pearl River going straight ahead and brought down well short of the first down. So it'll be a uh, turnover on downs back to Salmon. And that play was kind of unusual call right there. Unless, it, unless the ball, came the quarterback, yeah. Center exchange was something happened. Uh, well, it looked like it was blown up almost immediately. Yeah. As it just stalled at the line. So, another first down for Salmon. And do you think they, uh, you know, I mean, 744 in the second quarter, they're up 28-7. You think they keep it on the ground or just keep going? We'll see what they, we'll see. So, Leonard back in. Late player coming on. That's Deshaun Short <coughs> coming in for the Spartans. Back and handoff. Up the middle, bouncing it outside, spinning off one defender, and it takes a whole. It takes Zach Ussery to bring down the, the new running back in the game, a Kobe Nelson, senior running back for the Spartans. Yeah, that was a nice run there by Nelson. He spun out of a couple of tackles, but um, Ussery, nice tackle. Uh, but after a gain of seven. And that'll bring up second and four for the Spartan offense. Leonard, screen pass out to Deshaun Short, taking it to the sideline, still going upfield, has the first down, still on his feet before being brought down over there by Jacob Gudeman. I think it was Alexander. Or, or Jay Alexander. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice open field tackle, but wow, that short is a player, man. He caught the ball, go up the sideline, cut it back, then cut it back, cut it back to the middle, then cut it back to the outside. And it was a 16-yard screen pass out the short. Lee Vance Williams back in the game. Well, Lee Vance is kind of bunched in that wide receiver group there as Nelson is still in the backfield at running back. Snap floats back to Leonard. Finds a hole as Nelson still on his feet. Still going. Alexander is the one man to beat, and he'll be pushed out of bounds. Good acceleration and, and uh, run there by uh, Nelson. And uh, you, you, double up on your, um, you double up on your threats if you can take Lee Vance and put him out as a wide receiver. And, you, and Mr. Nelson here is getting some touches and showing he can um, he can tote the football. Yeah, and we saw that when we covered Salmon playing North Shore early in the season, we saw they would line Lee Vance up out at wide receiver and uh, run long routes with him uh, as he would just kind of speed past defenders. Well, back, quick pass out to Lee Vance, the screen cutting back has room going down the near sideline and forced out of bounds. I thought there was going to be a flag because he was actually tackled out of bounds. Yeah, he was well out of bounds. Yeah. Uh, however, that was not issued. The dreaded yellow hanky did not hit the turf. And again, another good screen pass and and Lee Vance made something out of nothing. A couple of good blocks, a good cut, acceleration, and uh, first down. Yeah, first and 10 for the Spartans. They continue driving on the Pearl River Rebels. And Snap is back. Handoff once again to Nelson, fighting through defenders, still on his feet and has to be gang tackled over there by a host of Pearl River Rebels. And that's, I mean, well, once again, good second, third, and fourth effort from Nelson just to stay up. He's, he's a fighter. He is. and uh, It was like almost like some guys didn't thought that uh, L.J. Leonard still had the football. And the next thing you know, um, Nelson is, uh, you know, 
gaining a few yards. So good effort by him. Brings up second down and about eight. With 534 remaining here in the first half, play comes into LJ Leonard. And of course, you know, the clock is their friend. They're up 28-7. Uh, Salmon kind of taking their time. Snap is back. Leonard looking left side, pass out complete. Tackled by Jay Alexander. And it's, in, it's complete to Antonio Marquez, the 5'10", 160 pound junior. Nice catch there, a simple stop route. Gonna bring up third and three for the Spartans. They have two to the right. Third down for the Spartans. Leonard calls for it, snaps back, handoff. Nelson breaks one tackle and he will score. Getting up with his helmet came off, but his mouthpiece was still in. And uh, the helmet hanging there from the mouthpiece. He's happy to have gotten in the end zone and scores. Spartans bump it up again. So that answers your it's, question. Are they going to sit on it or are they going to try to score? Now nah, they're going to go full throttle ahead. So Smith on to yeah. attempt the extra point out of the gable hold. Extra point coming. They're just awaiting the play being blown in. And we have a late player coming on the field. Oh, Nelson thought he could run to the sideline after that uh, score. Yeah. And he, well, he kind of, he ran off after he scored. And he, I guess they were missing a player uh, on the extra point team. So he ran back on. Now he's headed right back off. Confusion on the extra point. And Jeremy Hudson checked in for where Nelson was headed. So kick coming from Smith. Snap is back, it's down, kick is up, and it is it's good. good. So with 4.33 to go here in the first half, the Salmon Spartans lead 35 to seven. Kickoff coming for the Salmon Spartans. Ball kicked away and we have a flag on the kickoff. I guess they'll call what, like an off in offsides? Looks like the Spartans might have jumped a little soon there. Five yards. Go yep. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure on the Spartans. I guess some of them got a little too antsy, took off running a little too quickly. So re-kick for Eddie Smith and the Salmon Spartan kickoff unit. They reset the ball. It's 35-7, four and a half to go here in the first half out here at Rebel Stadium. Smith to kick it off, boots it downfield, and it's short. Doth will take it, heading upfield looking to find a seam heading back right side and he'll be dragged down over there by Braden Gables. So we'll see the Pearl River offense who desperately need to get something going as they're down 35-7. Here in, well here in the first half, but the typical offense, they run that kind of ground and pound uh, running offense uh, isn't really conducive to coming back from large deficits. Well said. Handoff oh. to Stoddard coming left side and he'll be wrapped up and brought down by Grid Isidore and his helmet comes off so 
He'll have to come out and a little bit of extracurricular activity once again as official throwing the flag. A discussion now between the referees and uh, there. the referee Both. and Coach Labradette. Well, we, I mean, we could see it clear as day here from the press box. The you know some extracurricular activity going on on the field. And he pulled his it, it pulled his helmet off and was saying something probably inappropriate, which drew that foul. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Pearl River. That'll back him up, and this crowd does not like that call from the officials. As you hear the chorus of boos coming in from the Pearl River faithful. Mm. So after Stoddard's helmet comes off, he has to sit out this play. Second down, handoff to Courtney Moore, trying to cut it back, still on his feet, still fighting for more yards. He's a player. He's a hard he is worker, hard running. It took a whole host of Spartans uh, he went a lot through. of yards to yeah. bring him down. He went through a couple of Spartans, and then uh, so he got back some of the yardage they lost on the, uh, the penalty. But it's still... Third well, it looks to be third and about 16. Yeah. So Justin, the play being called in, Justin Dean will be in the gun with Moore to his right. Snap back, and Jay Alexander cuts it back. Still on his feet, still coming to the near sideline, still going, and he loses the ball, and it's recovered by Tavion Cooley after all those yards in running. It reminded me of the earlier play. I think Salmon ran it for like 30 yards and got back to the line of scrimmage. That was probably about a 20-yard run. That would have been um, would have been a, pick, a nice pickup of about 9 or 10 yards, but Alexander fumbled. And the Spartans have great field position with 3.08 to go in the first half. Great field position once again. This is about the third time they've started in Pearl River territory. And they'll start with Leonard in the gun, two to the top, two to the bottom. Snap back, and they'll hand it off. And that play's blown up. Blown up in the backfield, the handoff to Aaron Williams, the 5'8", 165-pound sophomore running back for the Spartans. Nice run blitz right there by the um, by the Rebels, and they got in there. They blew it up off jump. So that brings up second and 13 for the Spartans. 2.35 to go here in the first half. See, Lee Vance Williams to the bottom of your screen. In the slot. Snap is back. Pressure coming. Has to throw it quickly out and incomplete. Intended for Aaron Williams once again. Yeah, good thing that one was uh, low right there. I'm, I'm glad Williams, or I would say, the Spartans are glad Williams didn't catch it and, be, and would be down right there. Incomplete pass. Going to bring and up third and about 13. Good pressure from Charles Lennerman. Trying to run down Leonard there. Got some outside blitzes coming. A snap back. Leonard looking downfield. Pressure coming once again. He lofts it way downfield. Intended for Lee Vance Williams but well over his head, incomplete. James Salvant, a wide receiver on the right side, was wide open. But they've gone from allowing uh, Leonard to have as much time as he wants to throw the football to blitzing and having some success right now. And yeah, they blitzed the middle linebacker and Cameron Hart 
on the play. And that'll bring up fourth and fourth and 13 for the Spartans, and it's looking like they will go for it. <laughs> we've yet to see LJ Leonard punt. He's actually very good at it, um, but we've yet to see it tonight. He is in the empty formation. Snap is back. Leonard looking left side, had time, and it is complete over there to Marquez, and he will dive forward for Whoa. the first down. Did he get a first down? It's, I mean, it'll be close. It's looking like it. Marquez was three yards short. It is a, it first. Is a first down. He was three yards short, and I'm thinking to myself, what? Why is the receiver stopping there and hit him in some kind of way Marquez fought his way to the first down? I mean, there was he was hit three times and didn't go down. Well, and it, as well as when he caught the ball, he had the defender's hands all over it with him, and he yanked it away and kept going. So first and 10 for the Spartans, minute 41 to go here in the first half. Snap is back. Hand off, nope, Leonard pulls it, keeps it himself, running right side, now cutting back to the middle, still on his feet. And we have a flag down. Right. Brought down over there by a host of Pearl River defenders. Unsportsmanlike conduct, I'm afraid. Let's see, personal foul, foul. On, no, on Pearl River. River. Yeah. Late, I think a late hit on that. A little chippiness in this rivalry, or rivalry matchup. And is that, that, isn't that pretty common? You see that in these, these rivalry matchups? But Especially when, when the score is this off balance? Yes, you do. But here's the, the key to all that is keeping a sane head. <laughs> There's no, don't, um, don't make it worse. Well, when you're Coach Lab going in at halftime, what are you going to tell your team? Um, we made it worse. Don't make it worser. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to tell my team to, to start focusing on what their job is and not all that other extracurricular stuff. Minute 18 to go in the first half. Leonard calls for it. Handoff, Lee Vance Williams looking for a hole, cutting it back to the left side, still on his feet for a good gain there. He's eventually brought down over there. He started right, then cut it back left, and then cut it back right again. Nice run by Lee Vance. A.J. Munts on the tackle, under a minute to go. They're looking to score once again before half. Hand off Lee Vance Williams, and once again had a hole that you could drive a truck through, and he will score. Lee Vance Williams, his second touchdown of the night. So 46 seconds to go, extra point unit coming on. Eddie Smith will come on to kick the extra point. Tiger, conversely, uh, if you're Coach Leonard and you're up, uh, well, with the extra point pending, 42-7, um, what do you tell your team? Um, you, this is where you can't let up. You have to come back out and execute when you have the football and play some defense. Just can't go back out there and, and just try to shadow it. You know, you got to play ball. And Smith's extra point is good. So with 46 seconds to go in the first half, Salmon leads 42-7. to seven. Eddie Smith kicking off following the Lee Vance Williams touchdown. Smith lofts it up. It's short, and it will be returned by Zeke Marquesi. And... He'll be tackled over there here on the near sideline. And more talking, but is there another flag? Yes, and more chippiness and more talking. From these teams. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, half and half. If you got a ticket, last four numbers. Oh, right over here. Oh, Michigan, man. Oh, I give you no Dead ball foul. We have personal One foul. Two. Personal foul is on, called on Salmon. Mm -hmm. So that'll push up Pearl River a little more. 
And, you know, when you're coaching, uh, you can clean up mistakes, right, you know, blown yeah, assignments, yeah, those kind of errors. Yeah, I, I mean, how easy is it to clean up these these mental errors, this, this chippiness, the talking, those, those you know, silly errors? It has no, it, that kind of stuff has nothing to do with the game, and it all it does detract from the game. Um, you should be able to do that, and then this guy took off too soon up the top of the screen. <laughs> he stopped as if to say, please don't anybody look. I'm, I've moved. <laughs> and followed it up with a, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it's Bradley James called. And after getting called on that one, he'll have to come out. The 40 seconds to go here in the first half. They have Doff lined up way out there. Everybody else is in tight. Stoddard comes in motion, and they'll give it to Moore up the middle, spinning off one defender, and he'll truck his way to getting a first down. The grid Isidore on his back, and grid will get the tackle. They were in the right formation and handed that ball to Moore, and he just chugged it. See, that's why you can't let up. Doesn't matter what the score is. You still got to tackle Mr. Moore. 31 seconds, clock running, Dean, and Dean will spike it to stop the clock with 26 seconds left in the half. So, Tiger, as we go into half, you know, we were talking about not letting up, what we would tell the teams uh, at halftime. Um, but do you think you'll see some of the guys with the clean jerseys over there, the, the twos uh, for Salmon? Uh, get some playing time in the second half well, to, I'm, to get I'm, some reps because these are the guys for the future. You need to get them some playing time. Sure, sure. If the score remains the same, um, I hesitate to say anything at this time because it's too, it's not halftime yet. But uh, yes, you would or should see others. Motion coming, ro rolling right side, and that play is blown up quickly mm -hmm. as Dean is dropped on his head. Over there by Chris Jones. They went with that play action pass that they had success with. Uh, I mean, actually, they had a run that um, Dean was able to capitalize on that time. However, no, it went nowhere. And a timeout is called on the field with 20 seconds left in the first half as Salmon leads 42 to 7. The third down for Pearl River with 20 seconds left here in the first half. Dean under center. He'll call for it, dropping back, looking left side, loses it. But the heads up play from the offensive lineman to recover it. That's Nicholas Howell. Garrett Crawford stripped Dean of the football and hit, hit the turf, but that'll end the first half. And the clock runs out. So at halftime, Salmon leads 42 to 7. And now let's welcome the Salmon High Band under the direction of Mr. James Stevens. Drum majors are Mark LeJean, along with co drum majors from Alice Mason and Terrence Jenkins. Band captain is Joshua Fricky. Brass captains are Nick Hersey, Roger Magoo, Connor Waters, Alvin Mason, Lauren Skiro, and Dave Pavavarov. Woodwind captain is Javen Carroll. Drumline captain is Nathan Log with co-captain Cedric Foster, along with Lieutenants Kaylee Hayes, Kobe Moore, and Sasha Jackson. Flag team captain is Caitlin Pierce, along with co-captains Byron Benoit and Shauna Carrier. The Salmon Band would like to open tonight's performance with Crazy and Love from Beyonce.
Now the Salmon High Spartanettes will perform to Sorry by Justin Bieber. The Spartanettes are led by Miss Libby Fletcher. Captain of the Spartanettes is Diamond Sampson. Co-captain is Paige Pagger. Let's hear for the Salmon Spartan Band, the Silk Spinners Flag Team, and the Salmon High Spartanettes as they play the Salmon High Fight Song. but the Creekside Marching Gators as well. Tonight, both bands will play second line, Louie Louie, and then close with Seven Nation Army. Mr. Abbott would like to thank Mr. Rome, the Creekside Marching Gators, for joining us tonight. 
So without further ado, I present to you your Prover Mighty Rubble Band and the Creekside Marcy Gator. Folks, you know the words to it. Sing with Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, your mighty rebel band and Martin Gator. And Martinson kicking off to start off the second half. Kicks it down to receive Williams and Short. And it'll hit the ground. Short picks it up, running up the middle, taking it outside to the right side. He'll come to the near sideline, still on his feet, still going, and forced out of bounds by Devin Hart. So Short is a wide receiver defensive back and a return guy. And uh, I thought uh, I saw him selling hamburgers in the concessions. No, just kidding. 
Speaking of concession stand, because I knew you'd w want to know. Yes. Had a hamburger here. Did, not, how was it? Not too shabby. Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah, they didn't have the, the dessert have foods the like, the, like, the like the bread pudding at, at Mandeville. They no, didn't have that's the dessert a whole foods. That's but, a whole different but thing. But they do the good barbecue here. That's right. So the burger was good. Burger was good. Yeah. I actually I tried the Frito pie uh, during halftime. It was pretty solid. Pretty. pretty Got to have that staple of a good Frito pie. Oh, yeah. As the snap goes back to Leonard, option out. Lee Vance Williams taking it up the left sideline. Still on his feet, but he's forced out of bounds after getting the first down. Forced out of bounds by the Pearl River defenders. Interesting thing about that play was that L.J. Leonard <coughs> kind of strung out the play and then pitched. And once he did, he got himself in front of a defender and blocked for Williams. Which is, as a former offensive lineman, it's it's pretty cool to see your quarterback mixing it up in there and blocking for you as opposed to just kind of hanging back uh, and, and not getting his jersey dirty. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's not afraid to get it dirty. So that'll bring up first and ten for the Spartans. Hard count from L.J. Leonard. Throwing right side the screen intended for Deshaun Short but way over his head and out of bounds. Too high. And some jawing after the play. Short wanted to say he got hit, but uh, I think it's incidental contact. At, at this point, you're up 42 to seven. I wouldn't be looking at the rest for anything. No. Fin finish the game. But as we were you know, questioning and talking about going into half was would we see fresh jerseys to start the second half, and no, they uh, they are keeping in their starters here at least so far in the first half. No, I wouldn't think they would. Half. I wouldn't in the early part. They, they're going to a bunch formation, but I don't think they would uh, do that now. They want to continue to uh, work the first team. So on first and ten, handoff. Lee Vance Williams cutting it back out to the right, still on his feet, breaking another tackle. Has some room, juked him, and he's brought down by Ussery along with Devin Hart after a big game. Great run, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Deshaun Short was up the field blocking. Good job by him. So uh, the Spartans knocking on the door early here, second half. As L.J. Leonard gets the play called in, Two to the left, two to the right. Thank you for my call. Leonard calls for it. Hands off. Lee Vance Williams, right side, has room, cutting it out to the outside, still fighting forward. And he will be down just short. And there's a flag down for, looks like, as you said, extracurricular activity. Yeah. As the player was down and the right. river guy was kind of standing over him. Right, right, right. Just get back up and get out of the way. But that's we talked about that going in half. We said, what do they need to do to clean up the, the extracurricular activity, the, the silly mistakes? And I have a simple they, solution. The, Don't do it. Exactly, but th they still, they're still they, doing it as we're seeing here right, in the second half. Right. What would be the point? What would be the point at this point? A lot of points. Well, it's a, in the redundancy department. Of redundancy? Yes. <laughs> this is where we are. And we're going to have a discussion, and the white hat is going to come over and Let's see what he has to say. Well, he hasn't indicated anything. He's going to say dead ball foul. And an unsportsmanlike conduct. Against Pearl River. Which, I mean, we saw clearly. The Salmon player was down. Right, right. And the Pearl River player comes and stands over him and taunts him. So very close to the goal line. And we'll have another flag. Well, we had, uh, this is what we had. We had the white hat talking to Coach Labradette, and the ball was snapped. That is all going away. We're going to have a, um, as we, as I've often said in a good volleyball game, when, when something they're not sure of it and we have a redo, everybody loves a redo. So yes. we're going to have a redo of that. And we won't have a foul. And yeah, that waved, there you go. It's waved off. Thank you. But, yeah, everybody everybody loves it when the, those two thumbs up come from the <laughs> official in volleyball. Yes. 
Well, unless a play goes a certain way that a, a team likes, and, and a redo is called. So Leonard, call for it. Handoff, Lee Vance up the middle, and he will score. 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 Lee Vance Williams' third touchdown of the night. Simple straight ahead football right there. Well, it looks like there's a flag down. Let's see what they have to say. Well, is it a penalty or is it a injury? No. Well, either way, it's. Oh, he, he signals something on the play. So. It's not a it's touchdown. It's not a touchdown. And uh, Salmon is backed up. So second and goal for the Spartan offense as they look to extend their lead. Leonard calling in the play to his offensive line. Alexander is in. Lee Vance Williams comes out. Alexander goes in at running back. <clears throat> Snap is back. Leonard looking. Left side pass. Complete out to Marquez. Who will score? Matt Marquez gets the touchdown. And not Williams. So. Salmon extends their lead. It's 48 to 7 with the extra point coming. And. Gable to hold for Smith. Everyone's set. Snap back. And Gable pulls it up, throws it out, and it is incomplete. So it, the snap looked okay. And he just kind of picked it up. It's not like it rolled back to him. Yeah. So I don't know if that was a called two-point conversion or I'm pretty if sure that just wasn't kinda... a, I'm pretty sure that wasn't a called unless the um, the players themselves decided to do it. Well, regardless, that, that two-point play uh, failed. So with 10.30 remaining here in the third quarter, Salmon leads 48-7. to seven. Smith kicking off for the Spartans after the touchdown. Kicks it deep, and Doth will take it. Running up the middle, following his blockers. Has a hole, still on his feet, still going. And Deshaun Short and Grid Isidore will tackle him down after he crosses the 50-yard line. So a good return for Al Doth. Yeah, they had like a, little, uh, like a little arrow in front of him of blockers, and he just kept right on their tails as they went up the field. And um, and got huge chunk of yardage across midfield out to about the 48-yard line. So big return, great field position for Pearl River. But then we we're having a well. Grit Isidore went down after the tackle there, but he got up and he's walking off under his own power. Uh, he may have gotten the wind knocked out of him or something down there, but he uh, he has to come out for a play as the trainers came on the field. So first and 10, Pearl River has the ball about the 48-yard line. Once again, we're held up for some reason or another. Official throws the ball off. Right. So Pearl River looking to dig themselves out of a mighty big hole as Salmon leads 48-7. Al Doth, the lone receiver, up to the top of your screen. Motion coming and a pass. Rolling to his right is Dean. He's having to cut back, running the other way and has some space. And he'll be brought down at around the 35-yard line. He gets the first down on the play. But Dean looks to be shaken up a little bit. And will step away for an injury timeout. So Ricky Jessup. Checks into the game at quarterback as Dean got shaken up on the previous play. It's first and 10 after that big Dean run on the previous play. Uh, first and 10. Jessup calling for it. He'll hand off more left side, trying to fight through defenders, but he's 
Stacked up and dropped by number 52, Jeremy Hudson. Hudson's been pretty stout tonight for the Spartans. So that'll bring up, well, we're waiting on the stick to move, but about a four yard gain, so second and maybe a long sixth. And fumble, recovered, Deshaun Short recovers it, and he will take it, go in 20, 10, goal line, touchdown. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh. And uh -oh. Deshaun Short scores an unnecessary play. Right. Back here by right. Grid Isidore. Right, right. And flags all over the field back here around the 50-yard line. Stay off the field. Stay off of the field. Absolutely unnecessary. So we'll have a referee discussion. A sideline warning is issued for Pearl River. Yep, all foul. And unsportsmanlike conduct called on Pearl River, and there's an ejection. And back to the head. And he's ejected. Two ejections. So two eje uh, an ejection for both teams. Right. So that's not what football's about, Tiger. No, um, this is. They don't need all this. All this discussion is, I guess, is not a uh, it's not a good situation that this has continued. No, and it's also uh, causing a massive delay in getting back to the game. I mean, the most important thing is to get it right and make sure that you, uh, if if somebody has done something egregious that they need to be thrown out, then that needs to take place. Absolutely. Uh, right. But that's the, I mean, it, it goes back to it. I've been harping on it the entire game about those just really silly mistakes, those ridiculous mistakes that just keep being made on both both sides. Right. I, I don't know how you clean that up. You can coach, you can tell uh, your team, you know, hey, do this assignment, make sure this play doesn't get blown up. You can do that. Right. Or here, here's how you should block to not draw a holding penalty. Right. But just cheap shots after plays? No, that shouldn't be happening. You. You need to take the, as a coach, you need to take the initiative to take the people that are doing that out of the game. I mean, obviously, there's been two ejections, but prior to that, there was. There it's been going have been, on all night. Right. It, it, it needs to be bring over the team and let's talk about this and we won't do it anymore. So the Deshaun Short score stands after all of that. Right. The score stands. It was a great play by Deshaun Short. Uh, heads up play, picking up the fumble and taking it 45 yards to the house. He scored on Excuse offense. Me. He uh, scored on defense. The house. And he's returned a uh, kick. Yes. So, um, so extra point coming from Eddie Smith. Snap back. Smith extra point kick is up. And it is good. So, with 9.03 remaining here in the third quarter, Salmon Spartans now lead 55 to 7. And Smith will kick this one off. It is low line drive, and it's down. downed over there by, as Corey Warren catches it and falls on it. So, if you're Pearl River, you're down 55 to seven. Uh, what are you looking to do here in the second half? Um, you have you, you're running an offense that isn't really conducive to a comeback, as I said earlier. A comeback is not right. even something you're thinking so about. So, are you just trying to run plays and get them down for next week as you move Correct. forward? Correct. You're, 
how can I execute my offense better? And snap down, handoff to Moore. He'll gain a few on the carry. Ethan Marth Martinson has come in at quarterback. The Martinson, a 5'8", 150-pound junior. And he's getting the play from the sideline and running it in. Moore still in the backfield. 8.26 to go in the third quarter. Motion from Stoddard, and they'll give to Stoddard. He bobbles it, and he will be slammed down in the backfield by Garrett Crawford. Crawford, another nice play from him. Crawford and Hudson's have been the mainstays defensively for the Spartans. That'll bring up second and about 13 for the Pearl River offense. As Pearl River as well taking their time to uh, get plays in, letting clock run. 7.35 on the clock, just in the third quarter still. The uh, play has, is, is moving very slowly. Martinson takes the snap, rolling out to his right, looking downfield, passes intended, intended over there for Jacob Guterman, but it is overthrown and falls incomplete. Gonna bring up fourth down. Brings up fourth and we will see the punting unit for the Pearl River Rebels. Amid all this craziness, I, I have a statistic for you. What is An that? An unusual statistic tonight. Yes. The number is six. And you would ask, what does six, what, why is six the number? All right, good question. Six is the number of former head coaches that are assistant coaches in this game. We have a timeout. We'll talk about it when we come back. As Salmon leads 55-7 with 7.18 to go in the third quarter. So Alexander, Alexander on the punt deep. for the Rebels. Back deep for Salmon. A Rodriguez along with Short. And Short will take it going left side. Has some room to run. Very speedy. Still going down the sideline. And he will be pushed out over there by Martinson. Look at that, the quarterback, the now quarterback. Getting some play on special teams, too, making the wow. tackle. Wow. And we'll have a player down, so we'll step away for an injury timeout. So Jonathan Lowry now in at quarterback for Salmon, and he will hand it off to Aaron Williams. And he'll be stopped at a, for a gain of maybe one on the play. But now, Tiger, uh, oh. we're starting to see fresh jerseys. And let's get back to your uh, – your, your number of the night, number, number six. six. Number yeah. six, the number of former head coaches coaching on both teams. Four on the Salmon side, Eric Shooter was formerly the head coach at Hannon. Billy Beasley was the former head coach at East Ascension. Craig Jones is a former head coach at Bogalusa. And Chris Thomas is the former head coach right here at Pearl River. But he is not alone. Alone, Offensive line coach on this side, Joe Harris, is the former head coach. Former head coach here. Yeah, right. And defensive coordinator Tony Jurich is the former head coach at Chalmette. So, so six former – a lot of coaching experience. A lot of field. A lot of – and then there's the two head coaches. So you're talking about eight head coaching experiences in this game. In this game. There you go. When you include Mike Labardette for Pearl River, Pearl River and Jerry and, Leonard – for Salmon. Correct. So Lowry, as I said, is in at quarterback for the Spartans. And handoff is fumbled. Ball is still loose, still. As, and let's see who got on it. It looked like a Pearl River player may have fallen on it. And no, Salmon gets it back. 
So that'll bring up fourth down for the Spartans. And as the ball was loose for a while, and eventually it was scooped in. And again, we're taking our time. Mm -hmm. So five. They said no, nothing happened. No. Whatever. Uh, we got a wave off or something, but it is going to be <laughs> <laughs> You're Mr. Virgil saying we have a wave off or something. We're not really sure what's going on with these officials on the field. But right. uh, all we know right now is the clock is not running, and they're talking about stuff. It should start again soon here. And I don't know why it stopped. I'm with yeah, you. because if they were running, running the ball and right. then they recovered it off the fumble. So but Lowry calls for it, and he'll hand it off. And with room is Aaron Williams tackled over there by Charles short Lennerman. Of the short of the first. And short of the first, and we have a yellow hanky on the field. Man, we've seen a lot of those tonight. Let's see what this yellow hanky's for. As they continue to discuss. Yeah, I think the worst part about this is the clock's not running. No, and it's 4.58 left in the third, but it's uh, called on Pearl River. But it was after the play, so it's Pearl River's football is what he's saying, what they're saying. So that is, well, both, both sides of the ball are standing there. They go now, they're starting to change out as Lowry in the Salmon offense jogs off the field. It's first down for Pearl River as the t for the, after the turnover on downs. But as we were saying, uh, fresh jerseys. Uh, Lowry is now in at quarterback. We're seeing uh, Aaron Williams in at running back. I couldn't quite see the numbers on the offensive line. I know that's usually the last unit you take out when you're subbing in. Uh, the backups. Yeah, because you don't really want to go to get really killed, <laughs> your, your people killed. And now we'll see Martinson in the Pearl River offense one again, once again. Trying that hard count. Now Martinson getting the play from the sideline. He will call for it, handoff. Courtney Moore cutting back, still Moore, going, still, still dragging still players. Going. And he'll eventually be tackled down over there by number 64, right, Marcel Moore. Perry. That's the nose. So they still have their uh, quite a few first teamers on defense still in the game. As the clock is running 4.33 to go here in the third quarter. Martinson under center once again. He'll hand off to Moore right side. Perry on his heels, but Moore still trucky forward, and he's eventually Moore. dropped over there by the Chris Jones. But it's a first down for Pearl River. So we were talking about rebounding. Salmon rebounding tonight off of that loss to Franklinton last week. And they it, came out here early and uh, established themselves. Of course, Pearl River, you know, gave them a few touchdowns. When I say gave, fumbled the football with in, with in, in, you know, under the shadow of their own goal, which were almost gimmies. Uh, not that the Spartans didn't ex execute. They did. But... Um, you, you can't be in a ball game making this many mistakes. Well, especially late in the season, you usually like to, you know, you're going to make mistakes. Teams are going to make mistakes, but you like to clean up your mistakes early so that once you get into district play, this is Pearl River's first uh, district game of the season as Moore stiff arms a defender and he's brought down on the run. But this is Pearl River's first district game. Um, and you'd like to, uh, this, this late in the season, it's uh, week seven. You'd like to have those mistakes cleaned up by now. Yes, but 
it is a big district game, and sometimes the emotion of it all um, is a factor. So three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Salmon leading 55 to seven. And Pearl River, they, they do that, that thing where they get set, and then they get up, they look to the sideline for a play, go back, and then come back up again, get another play. Stoddard switching sides, Moore in a three-point stance. And going right side, Martinson, a lot of pressure on him, and he's dragged down. He couldn't get the football to the running back and, and hence just kept, kept going that way. A busted play. Tackle over there by Chiron Donaldson. This clock continues to run. It's third, it's, excuse me, it's fourth, fourth down, down and about se a long seven to go. So we'll see the Pearl River punting unit with Jay Alexander. And Short still back there, along with Rodriguez. And they're missing someone. Yeah, late player coming on for Pearl River as Charles Lennerman straps up his helmet and okay. runs onto the field and gets set. Snap is back. Punt is away. And it is and it will roll out of bounds. So Salmon will take over at about the Pearl River 48-yard line. A lot of white jerseys now. A lot of them. But Lowry checking back in. And, well, on the offensive line, they are still keeping their starters in. Did you see Mers, Perry, Schmidt, Johnson, and Crawford. Snap is back. Lowry will hand it off once again to Aaron Williams, and he'll be dragged down by number 25. Williams is, instead of... Okay, I'm sorry. And he'll be dragged down over there by Matthew Elsenson. Um, Williams had a block by Steven Sims, and he tried to bounce it outside the block instead of cut it up inside the block, and that resulted in a loss of a yard. So that'll bring up second and 11 for this Salmon offense. And we are under a minute left here in the third quarter. Lowry calling for it, and he'll hand it off again. No, he'll keep it, and himself has plenty of room, and he'll be brought down over there by A.J. Munts. So the keeper for Jonathan Lowry gets a pick up, picks up a first down for Salmon. Thirty-seven seconds. Clock is still continuing to run. And at left tackle, that is not Crawford. It is Jeremy Hudson. Run on the play. And he's gang tackled by a gang of rebels there. Led over there by Rudy Crawford. And the clock will run out as it's 4, 3, 2, 1. And that will end the third quarter as Salmon leads 55 to 7. St. Tammany Parish Public Schools, an A-rated school district. Graduates with the highest ACT scores in the state facilities with the latest technology, safe and secure schools, a variety of sports, fine arts, and learning to last a lifetime. I'm Superintendent Trey Foles, and this is where we educate every child every day. The second down for the Spartan offense. 
Lowry calls for it. He hands it off. A new running back, Ephraim Williamson, and he won't be brought down, but forward progress will be stopped. And that'll bring up third down for the Spartans. It's Ephraim Williamson, he's a senior, 5'9", 175 pounds in at running back. And it looks as if they've put in their second offensive line as well now. So Lowry calls for it. Hand off once again, a lot of hesitation. And he's brought down in the backfield by number 63, Dalton Hoover for Pearl River. Hoover, what's read me his size. Dalton Hoover, he's a big boy. Six foot six, 305 pounds. Yeah. And Good job by him. And Efren Williamson just had all 305 pounds fall down on top of him. So 10.45 to go in this game. Salmon taking their time. It's fourth down. They'll go for it. Jonathan Lowry, the sophomore quarterback, calls for it. And he'll keep it, faking left, trying to cut it back inside. And he'll be dragged down by number 52, Byron Holmes, 5'8", 175-pound junior for Pearl River. So that'll be a turnover on downs. And we'll see the Pearl River offense have another go here. So what do you think we'll see out of Pearl River uh, you know, go, going forward here in the fourth quarter, finishing out the game, what do you think we'll see them keeping it on the ground but trying to perfect it? Uh, you know, trying right to now they've got their everybody's learning. It's a learning situation. Right. They got the young guys in. Yeah, it's all about learning. Um, the thing is, you got to look ahead. Their 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 season only gets tougher. Stoddard finds a hole, on. still going, and he'll be tackled down over there by Anthony Mosley. But yeah, right you are about their uh, their season only gets tougher as they're just starting district play with this game. Next week, they have to travel to LaRanger. Uh, yeah, LaRanger four and two uh, have to play them next week. They're a very good team. Uh, we saw that last year. They were, they were go coming into the season, they were the favorite to win this district. I, uh, their, their head coach, I coached their head coach. Sammy Messina yes. was uh, offensive lineman. I was the offensive line coach at Independence. And he played for me, excellent football player and an excellent football coach. Yeah, as reflected by his team, uh, that's gonna require a lot of, uh, of preparation for that LaRanger team. Now Salmon um, will move on after this uh, game tonight. They'll move on to play a two and four Sumner. Um, who they run kind of a veer offense, but it's kind of a predictable veer because they don't they don't actually run the option. It's more of a they just kind of call every play. Well, so they'll the, call the dive, call the option, call the keep. Well, um, they beat them last year. Um, I know you can't count it ahead of time, but it's not. It's not like playing Lakeshore, Franklinton, and LaRanja, for sure. For sure. But coming out coming out of that game, they will see uh, LaRanja and Lakeshore, if I'm correct. Right. And uh, Salmon, yeah, Salmon closes out the season with Lakeshore. So they'll see LaRanja in two weeks, and then Lakeshore for the, fi the final game of the regular season. Right. So 8.30 to go here in the fourth. Martinson under center, who call for it. Hand it off to Stoddard, coming right side. Still barreling forward. Good gain there on the rush, and he's tackled by number 14, Larry Barnes, who's a sophomore for the Salmon squad. 
So the young guys getting a learning experience, uh, getting to play under the Friday Night Lights. A bunch of them right now on both sides. And the White Cap says it's the first down, I do believe. I've been wrong, but I believe it is the first down. It is. Move so it's first team. down. They're moving the chains. and the, Well, the play gets off before they can move the chains. And they'll let it stand. So first and five, uh, excuse me, second and five. That was a first down on that last play. And now we have some official discussion. We'll see what happens here. And the white hat is correcting that to say it was a first down. Let's get. But replay. Replay. No penalty. Wipe it off. Play it from there. First down. Right. So it's first and 10 for the Pearl River offense. Play coming in. Martinson talking to the coaches on the sidelines. Martinson, as the clock continues to run, it's 7-11 left in the fourth quarter. Martinson under center, calls for it, and rolling out to his left, looking to pass, lofts it up, and uh, thrown to the sideline, nobody home, as it falls incomplete. We have a flag down. I'd like to nickel for every time you've said that. And we have had plenty tonight. You would be able to afford one of those Frito pies down there. <laughs> well, I missed out on maybe, that. Maybe even a Frito pie and a, and a drink. That'll move Pearl River forward, and that'll be a first down for them. Seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And Martinson comes in with the play from the sideline. And clock will start running as the official signals it in. Motion, Martinson rolling right, pass complete to Courtney Moore and he's forced out of bounds over there by Anthony Mosley. But a complete pass from Martinson to Moore. Nice pitch and catch there on the uh, play action pass. Moore picked up about four. So that'll bring up second and six for Pearl River. And Al Doff is heading out wide. He's the lone man wide. Everybody else is in tight. Motion from Stoddard. Martinson will hand off to Courtney Moore, still barreling forward and brought down over there by number 47, Stephen Cowie, who is a freshman on this Salmon team. Yes, good, good run up the middle there on the trap play by Moore. Gets them, gets them a first and goal. Yep, first and goal for Pearl River as the clock continues to wind down. 5.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Pearl River getting set. Martinson, snap, handoff. Stoddard going left side. He sees room trying to get out there, and he'll be tossed down before reaching the goal line by Joseph Saul, a senior on this Salmon squad. Yeah, you, you, you were kind of eyeballing what I was, which is he was head, he saw that opening. He oh, saw yeah. the end zone. He was trying to get there, but... Uh, wait a minute, not so fast, my friend. Too much speed from Saul as he catches him before he could cross the line. And Martinson, Martinson's coming uh, off to the sideline after every play to get the new play called in. Talk about and then tire taking yourself his time running. out. Right, <laughs> yeah. he's getting some conditioning and just uh, in between plays. There's 4.45 to go. Martinson calls for it. He'll hand off to Moore, who will score. 
the simple handoff to dive up the middle, uh, Courtney Moore. Nothing fancy, straight ahead. So, the touchdown for the Rebels, and they will go, let's see, they will kick the field goal, or the extra point, excuse me, as Hunter Martinson. So Martinson is holding for Martinson, Ethan Martinson, holding for Hunter Martinson. Snap down, placed, kick is up. And it is no good. So with 4.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Salmon leads 55 to 13. And kickoff coming from Martinson, boots it downfield. Deshaun Short will return it, going straight upfield, making some cuts, and he's hit and dropped by Stoddard. And I'm actually, there's 421 remaining. Salmon's up 55-13. I'm surprised Short was in the, uh, received that one. It just might have been, uh, they wanted to make sure he's off the field now. He's, you know, make sure they would catch it and run it straight ahead, you know, that kind of thing. Right, so here we're- No, we'll no gaffes. No gaffes. They just, yeah, I guess wanted somebody who's sure-handed who won't drop it. So Lowry back in at quarterback for Salmon, and the clock is running handoff to Williams, and he's still on his feet, still trucking forward, and dropped over there on the far sideline by Elsenson. But he's still inbounds, and we have a Salmon player down, so we'll step away for an injury timeout. So Jonathan Lowry hands it off up to Ephraim Williamson, and he'll be brought down after a gain of about five on the carry. As the clock winds down, 3.37 to go in this one. Part of the problem right there is that the, the officials are not blowing their whistle fast enough, and they keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. You know, when the person's down, blow the whistle, don't, you know, or forward progress is stop, blow the whistle, end the play, and don't have people keep tugging, knowing that, oh, I've gone as far as I'm going. Well, especially they're going to play to the whistle as their coach to do. Williamson gets another handoff, and he'll run it up for a gain of about four as we're below three minutes. So, let's see, third and about third and a long four, maybe third and five uh, to go. And where do you go from uh, on both sides, Salmon and Pearl River? So coming out of this game, we talked about their opponents coming up, but where do you go from here? How does how does you know Salmon after beating them 55-13 not get too full of themselves going into next week? And how does Pearl River not get demotivated going into next week? <laughs> well, here's part of the thing: the coaches will um, coach Labradette will throw away the the film and not focus on that he'll focus on what did we do wrong how can we get better because that's what he's doing he's trying to build a program he's not he's not going to yes we made mistakes but what do we need to do to get better that's what he'll focus on on the other side they had a good game look that team on the <coughs> other side was a, was a perennial 10 game winner right the two seasons before this, they've had two and two. Now they've got four. They're not going to get too big for their britches. They're a ways away from that yet. Let me say that. Ephraim Williamson carries there, and he's brought down by number 79, Barry Freeman, 6'1", 225. As we're 90 seconds away, Here in the fourth quarter, Lowry taking his time, awaiting the play from the sideline. It's second and five for the Salmon offense. Snap back, Lowry hands off Williamson, and he'll be met in the backfield and gobbled up by a host of Pearl River players led by Cameron Hart, their middle linebacker. Under a minute to go. 
and Salmon will just continue to take their time. Third down. <laughs> the third and about seven. It's 34 seconds to go. And Lowry calls for it. And a new running back is in for the Spartans, taking it right side. He'll get the first down, and he'll be run out of bounds over there oh, by no. Pearl River. That new running back in is Mosley. And we will come to the end of this one as the clock winds down. Ten seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. It's winding down. And Salmon will win this one 55 to 13. So let's take a second to thank those who helped bring you this game, starting with our superintendent, Mr. Trey Foles, our director of broadcasting, Dr. Melody Swang, sideline camera tonight, Rhett Sharp, cameraman, editor, and coordinator of Channel 13, Dave the Rave Williams, color analyst, Tiger Edwards. And uh, from so from Rebel Stadium, where Salmon wins 55-13. My name is Grant Yenny. Good night. You are now leaving the prep zone. <laughs>